I'm here with Thomas to talk about Before the Dawn, the latest record, Stormbringers. I was surprised it wasn't Waves, by the way. Uh, coming out <laughs> June 30th on Napalm Records. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Sweating today like I did yesterday. I'm probably going to do it tomorrow like I told you. Busy times. I can, I can imagine. Summer, I, can, you know. I, I can imagine you. You're swamped. Uh, so, so let's let's talk about this record. 11 years since Rise of the Phoenix. What made today, now, this time, this year, the right time for a new record from Before the Dawn? It was a series of unforeseen events that led to this whole thing. This was uh, We never planned to do a comeback. And uh, we made it the, the whole comeback as messy as we can make in the in the eyes of the fans because we we did release the vinyl version of the Deadlight album just a few years ago with one new song called The Final Storm featuring Lars from the Deadlight album lineup. But he he was never like uh, supposed to be the part of any kind of comeback. He retired 13 years ago from the music business and we did just a few like stand up shows. But of course now looking back. We kind of sold that idea to the fans that that would be the comeback. So we, of course, we came with a different singer, me not doing vocals at all. But uh, yeah, it, it, it was never planned. And uh, it, I we played Bob. Everything started like the whole, he started the domino effect when he did the death song in Voice of Finland. And that, I, I, I heard about that. I heard, is that how you discovered him? Yeah, I... Apparently, we've briefly met in one festival, but I never like uh, properly met or like I, we didn't have a proper discussion. And uh, we started to talk online after his performance. And I was like uh, cheering him up uh, during the competition. And when the competition was over, he came second in the finals. I suggested like maybe we could try and do some music together. I might have some song ideas that would fit to his voice. And uh, we went to studio. We, we did Downhearted. And uh, when that song was mixed, I was in the car listening to the final mix. And it, it hit me instantly that this sounds like Before the Dawn. And you don't take those kind of things back. When, when you know, I don't know if you know, but if, if there's a voice in your head telling to murder people, a lot of people listen to those voices. So I'm not to blame. Like, I, I did the same. There was a voice inside my head saying, like, that sounds like Before the Dawn. And... So it, even the first song that we released was never meant to be before the dawn song. That's how less we planned the whole thing. Wow, this could have been more organic. Yeah, yeah, it's like everything just started happening, which usually is not the case in music business. Like, like uh, when we put the downhearted out, then suddenly there was the Napalm offering a deal. There was a booking agency throwing festival, festivals and Finnish tours and now European tour in our direction so this is not the way usually music business works you it involves a lot more banging your face against a concrete wall and uh hoping to make a tiny hole or even a dent but uh yeah so, weird and or, organic is a good way but to us it's also weird to see things just yeah happen like almost chaotically so <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so once this this snowball, this avalanche started to roll, uh, did you start to think, okay, if we're going to make an album, we have to have an like a vision for what this album is going to be? Uh, how, how did that idea, vision, or or thought process start to develop once you knew you were going to have him as the vocalist? And okay, now we got to have to do a record. Well, well, that was I think that to me was the most organic thing to have him because we already did one song with Pablo. Like I already had the song that gave me the idea of new version of Before the Dawn. So I, I accidentally already started the creative process. I was planning to do more songs for Pablo. So I already knew what kind of like stuff I would like to write for him. And then suddenly realizing like, ah, we are working with Before the Dawn now. The, the writing process was already ongoing. So I didn't need to sit down and think like, uh, how to ride the bicycle again, like how to ride another Before the Dawn album after such a long break, because I was excellently doing it already. So that that was maybe a little bit more controlled chaos then at that point. That That's, to me, always the songwriting is the less chaotic thing. Everything 
concerning the music business and management and booking agencies and tours and festivals and album release and scheduling. That's where the chaos lies. But songwriting is is pretty like a calm, calm prose, especially now because, yeah, like I said, I didn't need, need to even sit down and think about the whole thing because the album was already kind of like writing itself. Uh, how um, how involved was he in the writing process uh, of the songs? Did, did you work with him together on some ideas or was the, the brunt of the work on your shoulders? Well, I, I did like I usually do that. I make I, I wrote the instrumentals and made the arrangements myself for, for every instrument, like the core arrangements, of course, every guy adds their own. But uh, but uh, yeah, we worked together very closely with the vocals. I sent him all the demos and I wanted to get the first idea from him. Not that I'm telling him uh, what to sing and where and with what kind of rhythm. So, so yeah, he he was very, very much like, uh, like more than any other vocalist in, in Before the Dawn because I used to do the growling rhythms and arrangements. Now he did both vocals. So he actually... That's him on the harsh vocals? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I didn't do any vocals. I, I didn't feel that it would make any sense for me to just like uh, mess around with the vocals also. He does it better. I, I need to step up now with the next wolf heart. <laughs> so, which is a good thing. I, li I like this. When you when you're working with people better than you, it always gives you like a natural boost of like you don't want to. I'm a competitive person enough. Like I don't want to lose naturally to anybody. So I, I need to step up a little bit, especially with the low growlings. But yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, he did more than any other vocalist in in Before the Dawn ever. And with the same pattern, same same goes also with uh, it was with Black Sun Eon. It goes in Dawn of Solace. I would never tell Mikko what to sing. I always want to get the initial idea from the vocalist because like. Who am I to tell a vocalist what to sing? Was he a little bit nervous? The reason I'm asking that is that the first song that you guys released with him, I felt that some of his tone, some some of his pronunciations were a little bit, at least to me, they felt a little bit off and he felt maybe like he was a little bit nervous. Did, did you see that in him or no? No, but but uh, I, I, actually, I saw your review and that might have been the case actually. Like it's... Uh, this is the first album we work together. So it always like uh, takes a certain amount of time where to get like completely in, in used to working with somebody new or you are able to unleash the full potential or you hear the full potential of the person. So I didn't hear or see that in the studio at all. But uh, of course, I'm not the right person to fully analyze it that way because I'm completely inside the box. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, like for for example, you you can listen to the song in completely different pair of ears and different perspective. Uh, I'm the songwriter, so I I have a weird personal emotional connections for to the songs, the lyrics, to the, even for some like drum patterns or stuff like that. So I'm I have a completely wrong approach to analyze. It's hard for you to see the forest from the trees when you're that deeply involved. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, and and when I when I first heard that first song, put me a little bit on 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 the back, uh, my back against the wall a little bit. I was like, ooh, I don't know if how this is gonna work. Then when I started listening to the album, I was like, wow. What I the comments that I had on that first video is exactly the approach that you guys took on the record. And I was like, I know it's not because of what I said. Or you guys could give two shits about what I say, but it, it, was, <laughs> it was exactly it was exactly what I felt that his voice could do and the record could really use like using those yep. sometimes using those harsh vocals as backing vocals adding a different layer beneath the clean vocals sometimes switching those around becoming very dynamic a very dynamic vocal uh, performance throughout the entire record uh was that all him uh the idea to do those changes move it around adding harsh vocals behind clean vocals uh, how was that process uh, Saku Molonen, who is also the producer of Dawn of Solis, was the vocal producer of this album. Uh, and he also, he re recorded the vocals and mixed uh, the latest Wolfheart album. So he has a very good, like, uh, approach to blending different vocal styles together, because like Lauri and Vagelis and me fitting the same album is a good example. 
So like he also brought a lot of ideas, but it, it was uh, like, yeah, all the original ideas also like where is the growling and where is the clean vocals came from Bobo and we started working from there. So there's a lot of, lot of him in the record. And we, we knew when we were picking up the first single that it was, it was not the ideal song to, to represent Bob. It was the ideal song to try to get it to the national radio in Finland. Mm -hmm. And that could have, if that, we, if we, we did, that with that song back in the days and that could have had a, quite a big impact in the overall thing in Finland so we wanted to start with the song that had less growling which of course show less dynamics with the vocals so we kind of like put him in a little bit of a bad place considering that was the first song he came out as the official vocalist of Before the Dawn I don't think many people realize that he is the vocalist now when we release Down, uh, Downhearted that kind of like went under the radar with a lot of people. And when we released Destroyer, then a lot of people seemed to realize, ah, this is not Lars anymore. Which yeah, hasn't been the case. He wasn't even on the last album. So I think that then, then the reality set in different way when we started talking about the new album is coming out. And this is the first single of the new album, not just a random song. And uh, that, didn't, that song didn't show his uh, potential the best way. But the, it like uh, we had, of course, a lot of criteria to pick up the first single song, not just uh, representing one member. But yeah, I think it would have been smoother with the feedback also if there would have been another song. Because now looking at the feedback of the second single and even the he did the voice, like the sing through of the same song. And I only have seen one negative comment about sing through of the same song where he just does the same exactly the same song in one take in studio both vocals so it's i think there was a lot of like uh shock reaction also i think it, i think it takes some time for the years to adjust yeah to to a new voice to a new vocalist it, it, it there's a little bit of a shock to the senses a little bit which is mm -hmm. normal it, which, and it, it is a big change i i do fully get that because it's not just that the, the clean vocals sound different than any of our previous. Not just Lars, but also Pano, who did the first two vocals, uh, two, first two albums. But also, I don't do the growling. I, I used to be the front of the band, which I, I'm super happy I'm not anymore. <laughs> and and that, was, that was one of the, the main like key elements. Like If I would have needed to be guitar player and growler, the comeback would have never happened. I, I wouldn't. You needed to I would never. Yeah, I already have Wolfheart, and we we are busier than ever, and there's no stopping for that band uh, in the near future, at least. I would never be a frontman in two bands at the same time. I can barely handle one, so that scenario would have been impossible already. So, <clears throat> so he's not just replacing. He's we are doing like reverse scar symmetry. They, they had to have like two guys replacing one. Now there's one guy replacing two and also he's replacing the front man. So there's like a three separate changes happening, which I can understand if I, if I would be like a fan of some band for years and this kind of change happen, it would take a lot of time for me to adjust. Yeah. And, and I think that's where it came from. Once from personally, once I got into the record, then it was a different story. And it even felt to me like there was a different vocalist. I was like, wow, that 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 first song definitely didn't feel like a good representation of where this album went. Now, having said that, maybe that's a good thing because then the album comes out out of nowhere and it really yeah. hits you hard and you're like, wow, this shit is really good. So it, it, when you set the bar low, it allows <laughs> the album then to really just surpass the bar. Yeah, I, I think it's also a good sign of the album that more songs you listen, the 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 more wider it gets. If the first song would cut through the whole album, that you hear the one song, you heard everything that the album has to offer, that would be an issue itself. Because uh, like to me, it's always really like shitty thing to pick up the single songs because to me, I, I'm too old school. I write full albums. I don't really enjoy this streaming approach 
that you need to have three or four singles per per each album and uh and the playlists play a bigger role than the album sales overall people don't listen to albums the same way they used to so that kind of like sucks because there's never to me there's never a song that could fit just as a, as a single to tell the story of the album I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm a record listener. I have to go from first to last. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the whole Spotify singles, that kind of stuff. I, I need the experience that the album uh, provides. And, and speaking of experience, the guitar sound on this album has a little bit of grit. I want to call it grit. Um, was that on purpose before you guys even went to production? You wanted to have that gritty sound on the guitars? Or is that something that kind of developed when you're already in production? Uh, well, on this album, we I definitely the one of the key elements was also that we need to have the same people working in the studio that used to be the team in the in the studio for before the dawn, which means that the Juho was the sound engineer, uh, both like recording and mixing, and I let him choose the guitar sound. That's like I, I didn't want to be too hands on, because that's like he's. During these 10 years or 11 years we, we've been in uh, buried, like he's become such a professional. Like a good, good example, Deadlight is what album that we get compared a lot, which is weird to me because that, that was the messiest album, like a uh, recording session I've ever been part of. We had to kick out the drummer of the band after three days of recording. And I had to play the drums with no rehearsal at all. We recorded the whole album in Juho's rehearsal place. We, he didn't have a studio back in the days. And now him being this top-notch producer and uh, audio engineer, he has a different uh, different authority to my direction. Like, uh, And of course, I, I let him choose the, the guitar sound and that was his choice. And I have no complaint about that. I, I get that it is different. It is not the typical like uh, American kind of like uh, production guitar sound, but uh, I think it fits really well for the album itself. I think it fits with the album and it fits with live because it has more of a live feel yeah. uh, to it. Because when you're playing live, you don't have a very super polished sound on the guitars. You have that, that grit comes through. So the album has that. Now, on the other hand, I thought it was really cool to add the acoustic guitars and the solos coming in with a different style production on those. So you have the overall guitar sound that has that grit, but then you have the more clean feel sound on the solos and the acoustic that creates a little bit of a distance between the two. It, it separates the two, even though they, they have a lot of commonalities. Does that give a little bit more depth to the overall experience of the sound as well, in your view? Yeah, yeah, and it, like I like that the the layers are very clear, and there's lot enough air between. Like you said, it sounds very live, kind of thing. You you could believe that there's a band just performing the song in the studio, not that yeah. there's a huge amount of tracks and layers, and so yeah, it's it sounds very, not just clear but uh, organic. We we are overusing that term now. <laughs> But uh, but it it sounds sounds yeah it doesn't sound overproduced which in my opinion wouldn't fit for our music. You you mentioned you don't want to be a frontman of more than one band. Uh, you move behind the drum kit. How how comfortable are you behind the drum kit? Getting more and more comfortable. Like I'm always more like as a default, I'm the most comfortable behind the drums. I don't like to be in the front that much. I have my weird issues and that's why I, I rarely talk to the audience if i talk to the audience uh i usually just try to piss them off to do a mosh pit that's that's <laughs> like that's what i have to give for the for the world of entertainment which is not much i had this conversation many times with our management that it would it could actually help a lot if i would be more as a front man but uh this is what you get <laughs> but with the drums I was say, is that why you added the horns on the wolf heart set so that all of that kind of hides you a little bit? Yeah, more? yeah, yeah. It, it's just oh, my only issue that there's no horns in the middle of the skull. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like for me, it would actually like this huge unicorn <laughs> skull thing would fit a lot better because now the antlers are on the sides, so I'm still very much visible in the front. So 
that, that is that is true. I, I have one last question for you. Uh, and, and that is, uh, you know, every band, whenever you guys release a new record, doesn't matter what band, you, you, everybody always says this is our best record to date. I mean, you, you really have to feel like it is the best record to date. Otherwise, why would you be releasing it? So in, in this case, what makes Stormbringers the best before the Dawn record to date? I wouldn't be able to answer what makes it best, but we started playing the, uh, at least four songs from the album already from the first gig. And now we are, we have like five songs in the set already, even though the album is not out yet. So I like, uh, th that's a good test. When, when you play new songs live, you, then you feel how they fit compared to the, all the previous ones. And uh, I, I could play the whole album. I, could, I wouldn't want to play any other album from beginning to the end. I think that's the, what gives me the strongest single. This is really good album for the band. And also it's like, to me, the new songs are the highlights in the set, even though I played drums on the several uh, before the Don albums before, and uh, there's huge amount of songs that I always wanted to play as a drummer. I was just like, kind of like hoping for the opportunity. Maybe our drummer gets sick or something breaks a leg just before the go, and I'm like, I can do the drums on this one, <laughs> which never, naturally never happened. So there's a lot of songs that I've been waiting for, almost like some of the songs, like 15 years to be able to play live. Uh, I've been practicing the songs just uh, to entertain myself, like uh, at the rehearsal place. But of course, as a, as a guitar player, you don't get to play drums live. But, uh, but still, the new songs are the highlights when I get to play them. So... And I need to, I'm going to go back to the previous question, like being comfortable behind the drums. As a default, I'm always the most comfortable behind the drums. But now there's a, it's a different thing. Dawn of Solace is quite easy stuff to play with the drums. It doesn't require that kind of a, like a stamina. And we haven't played much gigs anyway. But with before the dawn, there's only ridiculously good drummers being like a. Jonas used to play on the drums. He plays now in Wolfhard. Atte used to play several years. He plays in Beast in Black. Mm -hmm. uh, Ukri did one of our last uh, tours. He plays with Abbath. So the bar is ridiculously high. And I really need to reach that because I don't want to be the shittiest drummer. <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> I don't want to be the shittiest drummer. CDS drummer in before the dawn. So I, 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 I've been working a lot. I've been training at least four times a week for past half a year, like prioritizing my time and schedule for the drumming. And, uh, and yeah, so I'm getting more comfortable, the more gigs I get, because I'm, it's, uh, I, I feel the pressure of the previous drummers and it was horrible just last weekend in the uh, Midsummer Festival in Finland, when Beast in Black was playing at the same festival, and Atta was watching me play. That was the, that was as less comfortable I've ever been as a drummer. <laughs> While I was the, the most comfortable being on stage. So, yeah, ni nice little duality there. Well, uh, Thomas, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it as always. I, I hope that you bring the show on the road beyond Europe and bring it to North America at some point in time. Uh, it would be amazing. So um, I'll, I'll see you soon because I know you'll be hitting the road at some point in time. So we'll cross paths again in Toronto very soon. So once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.